I like reacting to some of my old videos. It'd be kind of funny. This one's about the Jihad princesses, and I think I said the potential of a Jihad princess. I, 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 I don't really think I'm going to embarrass myself already, but let's let's look at young Naya. I'm just yeah, I'm still already old then, but let's look at a younger Naya when there was hope and optimism in his eyes for Tower of God and see what he thinks about the princesses of Jihad. Them princesses. Let's see what they got. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna make a video today, but you guys got lucky because I got inspired by a conversation I had. I kind of want to hype up the Jihad princesses a little bit. So I was having a conversation with my friend, and we we're kind of talking about how a lot of these shows, like in, in, like, in like Battle Shonen, for the most part, you know, just series in general where most conflicts are solved by like combat. That there's a point where like uh, the main character. And maybe the main character plus one or two rivals always end up eclipsing everybody else in the main cast. Yeah. In terms of overall power. Think Goku and Vegeta. Think Naruto and Sasuke. Think, well, one one that we talked about was Luffy. And do we think he's like way stronger than Zoro and Sanji? Like, has he made that gap incredibly wide to the point where... Let me see what date this is. This is what? This is, this is November 28th, 2018. This is whole cake. Hmm. Anyways, you think of a Yonko commander and a Yonko himself. I put an asterisk on that one just because I haven't seen Zoro and Sanji go all out yet, especially Zoro. He hasn't been pushed yet in the okay. new world, but Luffy's yeah, been fighting yeah, for yeah. his life. And, and he still so, hasn't been. King is some mid. So, asterisk on that one, but most importantly, that boy, LeBam James. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I feel about him and his party? And I honestly, like, Thinking about it, yeah, he's definitely at this point. There's no reason for us to believe he's not the strongest in this group and this in, in, amongst his friends. But I don't think he's he's completely outclassed in Dorsey. I oh think boy. she's right there, not far behind. Who I could agree, agree. Who could I argue? Who I can argue has shown moments and instances that make her as impressive as an irregular. So let's talk about the potential level Jihad Princess. I'm about to embarrass myself. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that irregular that that, that FEG took Bam because he's an irregular, not because his talent is matchless. I'm gonna use the name hunt station Shinsu boosting thing um, when they were when Croc and Yuri were fighting. I'm gonna use the um the the Shinsu quality how she learned it faster than everybody else just to be wrong. <laughs> Jihad princesses are the ultimate species in the tower. And while the regulars are clearly the tower. I actually did believe at the time, but with the introduction of like the ancients and natives and stuff like Arkanak and those type of characters and like the, the yip yip, the, is that the yip yip? The bull bison that thing summoned and like a Van Kels elephant could, um, I, I could, I could see them kind of being that, but you know, because my, my kind of idea was that regulars are the strongest things in the tower that's from outside the tower. And Jihad princesses were the strongest things in the tower, made in the tower, kind of kind of like, kind of like juxtaposition. Towers like unknown monsters. I don't want us to forget the latent talent that Jihad princess has. Even a demi slash illegitimate princess like Anak, who has, has immense physical strength despite not being a true princess her steel spear at the time that there were e-rank regulars was heavy enough that most e-rank regulars could not lift it let mm. alone use it the way she was using it right i don't sound i don't i don't sound like how some people be talking to me today about tower god and power like, like like this is like i was you guys at one point i was i believed <laughs> I mean, they don't get it they don't get it they don't get it they weren't here um she also so weren't power here i love this picture from that after consuming a lightning pill, who's a direct descendant of Kuda Dawn, and she fought on par with him. Mind you, Paracool shut that shit down with the <laughs> revolution. Because <laughs> he's the GOAT. But the point still stands. In terms of sheer physical nature, they are, on average, more physically able than most members of the 10 great families, and their bodies are more durable than the average ranker. 
Why did I say that? That's not true at all. What? Did I say the 10 great families, nigga? Am I? Was I? Their physical nature, they are, on average, more physically able than most members of the 10 great families. Oh, 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 oh. I, not family heads. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I said... How did I get away with that? There's no way y'all watch this if that, if that, okay. Their bodies are more durable than the average ranker, which is actually insane and a testament to how much power this procedure gives you, not to mention you have to be able to receive Jihad's power in the first place. There are princesses from the 10 great families with the power of blood who are so strong that they can surpass rankers while they're still climbing the tower as a regular. Now, if I recall correctly, the only instance of this that we have documented is Adori Jihad, who defeated a, reg a ranker when she was a regular. And if you want to add a another situation like that within a regular, though, um, on the 100th floor, I believe, Urek took Eri Han's test and he fought back and would have won, as stated by Ari Han himself. So that's a regular... Uh, yeah. A chosen regular, that's an irregular, not only beating a high ranker, but fucking Ari Han himself. Like, remember that since you get way denser and more li like liquid, the higher up you go, and this dude is still swigging a sword. Like, all things considered, like, really, like, real talk, do you think that's gonna matter at any given point where someone's gonna be like, the Shinsu here is so dense it's hard to move? Like, do you think that's something I should just stop, like, saying, in, like, in general? <laughs> Come on, one of the ten great families. Respect Urek. But back to Adori, the commander in chief um, of Jihad's army, and the sealed princess in Eurasia and Jihad, because both these princesses are ranked at seven, meaning that in the overall rankings, they have both surpassed most irregulars. N being or N being ranked higher than both her parents, Pobodo. Gustang, sorry if you can hear the garbage outside, and Eurasia Blossom. I think like Eurasia Blossom was the most talented destructive in the tower history. She once proved that she could accelerate the Shinsu area and she could instantly kill nine seven with the living there. I want to see Shinsu acceleration so badly, dude. While rankings are based on influence, recognition, and power, I think it's a feat in itself that people try to dismiss there are some princesses who potentially have the ability to surpass and stand look at me. above the head look at me <laughs> Yo. for anyone who tries to downplay their uh, accomplishments by man. saying it's uh, mostly because of influence and recognition stop because <laughs> no no it is and sometimes it is the physicians man like she's red bro like she leads the army and stuff dude like I remember because I, I, for a long time, I thought power was the most important thing. I don't think that anymore. Look, uh, I got to cloud myself. You're a bozo. Stupid. With most instances. I want a soundboard with the stupid from, uh, um, what's that guy's name? Something 6ix9ine. The rainbow, the, the skill, skill, skill hair dude from like New York or whatever, the rapper. Of a Jihad princess that we've seen as also from a great family, a family they have always been incredibly. 6 9 powerful incredibly impressive you have top 500 in ha yura jihad the pride of the ha family who even looks like ha urine who was gifted the black march after completing her car climb Masheni got the yellow may top top 100 not every princess gets a 13th month series when they when they finish their the exceptional ones get one when they finish their climb their climb only the best of the best so a daughter of two heads of the great of the great 10 families and jihad's blood who was awarded the colorless december after her climb week try again adori who has the only s rank weapon of the 13 month series in the golden november who was stated to be capable of carrying out all three given orders by jihad recently weak wrong try again and don't forget she beat a ranker when she was a when she was a regular <sighs> <laughs> I was passionate about this one. That's that. That's that. That's that. I'm exacerbated. Sigh. I still do that to this day. Where I'm like, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> They're both well deserving of the rank of seven, Frien. But um, 
And Dorsey herself has showcased tons of impressive abilities, but there's two specific instances I want to bring up before wrapping up that I think are overlooked. So, post name on station, not Bam nor. That's crazy that I gotta say this, but uh, I, I don't know if I've said it in this video. I've been reacting to a lot of stuff today, but I apologize if you hear the garbage outside. Just give me a second. Okay, hopefully it's far away that you can't hear it. Let's just finish this off. Guerrero, on a regular and a direct descendant, could keep up with and Dorsey without Shinsu. Yep. Because Jihad princesses have the aptitude to be equally, if not, I would say, more impressive than a regular. I'm not going to go that far, but I think you can make the argument. No, you can't. And make lastly, the in the name, not the name on station, in the um, hidden floor, aka the sword art arcs throughout the simi, she only needed two days or less than two days to master her Shinsu quality, that little red heart thing she has that kind of looks like a succubus tail to me. And she was like, why can't it be this easy? So it took Bam longer, who's an irregular. Remember the SL you said that when it came to Bam? To I know me, bro. <laughs> thing that readers misunderstand is that he's, his talent is amazing, but not matchless, matchless. And the reason why Fog took him was more for his irregular title than actually like what he could do. But that being said, just if you take anything away from this video, take, take away this. The irregulars are the ultimate species in the tower from outside the tower and then the jihad princesses are the ultimate species within the tower made in the tower both very impressive but i just kind of don't like how i i sometimes talk about how cool some of these princesses are and it kind of gets like well it's not like they're Urek or enry or something like i got that <laughs> but they're still bound by the rules of the tower unlike these neo motherfuckers coming in the matrix doing what they whatever they want like it's like like neo. i've always seen like irregulars as like neo in the matrix more than the way that other people have like that that's that's something that that's that, that's a consistent thing i've thought for like literally as long as i've been reading tower of god like not and, being and and, like a, and and the analogy that i use now example i use nowadays is it's like, like a soccer game it's the equivalent of me being able to pick up the ball and just run and throw it or whatever the case is think like wario from like um or like a Bowser or Donkey Kong from like the Mario Strikers series and stuff to kind of pick the ball. But the monkeys are like a little different in terms of their, I guess, their limbs. But yeah, um, you could be Cristiano Ronaldo, but and that means you're extremely talented. The goat, even yeah, I'm a Ronaldo guy. Yeah, what's up? What's up? But but then again, if I could just pick the ball up in a run, you're out of such you're at such a major disadvantage. You can only do so much because you can't break the rules. Maybe I can go out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? So like. That's how I see irregulars. They don't play by the same set of rules. The laws don't apply to them. Bound by laws, kind of, in a sense. I, I, don't, I don't have the same shackles. But anyways, wrapping it up. Thank you guys for listening. This went on longer than I wanted, and I have to edit it. God damn it. I'm just by myself, self. I'm just by myself, self. And I'm with the South City. Back when I really didn't like it, I don't like editing. I don't like these rainy skies. I still don't. I'm, I'm, I'm just better at it. I don't know why I don't pause when I'm talking. And it's like a cry for help. I'm just by myself, self. Yeah, um. Man. A different time, a different era, a different Naya. What do you guys think about that video? Do you think do you think any of the things I said really still hold up and hold any credence now? Is it just wrong and outdated? I think it's wrong and outdated, but let me know what you guys think. I've been enjoying doing this. I I don't know. It's a little bit relaxing too. We don't have to be going crazy. I could just kind of just kind of speak my thoughts. It's nice. But anyways, you guys let me know what you thought you think in the comment section below and have yourself some modify and get get, get what? It just happened. Day. It just happened. What just happened? You already know I got to show love to the Patreon gang. Yes, sir. Shout out to the certified BAM lovers, my CBLs. Big, big, big love to the Priest of Fire. I greatly appreciate you guys' support, but especially shout out to my fifth Zen God. Shout out to Simi, Scobe, Revenant, Miles, Lucky Roo, Lazy Dragon, Chris, Johnny Rogers, Irene Sharda, Tris, David Langstaff, Childish Nujabes, Alan, AJ, Abdel, and 528 AM. Your support is greatly appreciated, and thank you.